Hi, I'm Marge Charmley. Welcome to Buy Cities, a program by, for, and about the Buy Plus community and our friends and allies. My co-host, Dr. Anita Kozan, isn't able to be here today, but will join us for future episodes. Today, we are filming on location at the Because Conference, the Regional uh, Bisexuality Conference, in St. Paul, Minnesota, at the Paul and Sheila Wellstone Center. So welcome to Buy Cities. If you haven't seen us before, we are the longest running show in the history of the world on bisexuality. If you've been with us before, I'd love to have you back. One of the things that I love about Because is it feels like home. It's a place where I don't have to explain myself and I get to see old friends and meet new people as well. Today I will be interviewing some old friends that have been part of the bi and trans community for many years and have done a very special workshop here at Because this year. Uh, Jamie Ann Myers and Jim Larson are with us today and we welcome you. Thank you for being on Bi Cities. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Glad to finally be here. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jim, you've been uh, the treasurer in the past of the Bisexual Organizing Project, which we have displayed yes. behind us. Yes. Helped keep us going for uh, a long time. Right. Appreciate that. And Jamie Ann, you're no new, new, newbie to the uh, rodeo here of no. uh, Bi, <laughs> bi Conferences. Right. So, Tell us a little bit about, you know, the name of the uh, workshop that you did here at Because and, you know, some of the things you talked about, because I think it's uh, uh, very interesting and, and helpful to people out in the audience that are interested in the topic. I don't know if I remember the actual name of the, 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 <laughs> the what they actually called the, the right. topic, but it, it really was about um, finding community as a bi or trans person in the swinging kink lifestyle and then talking about disclosures that other people might want us to make or that we feel that we should or shouldn't make okay. you know, once we start to enter those communities and start to enter those, those certain groups and, and lifestyle choices. Okay, so a little bit of risk and you know, self-preservation that you right. need to be aware of when you're negotiating. Exactly. Yeah, it, okay. it's about, about um, not just emotional safety but sometimes even physical safety sure. so it's a it's a big concern and as you probably well know and all your uh, viewers know the b and the t are really small letters in the lgbt right uh, acronym right yeah the, the the kink and and lifestyle communities are well they're on the one hand very sex positive which mm -hmm. kind of intersects with you know, bi, trans, queer mm -hmm. identities, they can also be very, very bi and transphobic and be very heteronormative. Okay. Um, typically, the swinging community is very heteronormative. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, they, they look at things in a very kind of patriarchal, it's like it should be one male, one female, and they should do their things by themselves. You know, however, if two women want to do things, that's great because, uh, you know, we all love to see fantasy, that, right? right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but right. if two men start to do something, you know, they're horrified that, you know, it's like, no, 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 you know, we, we don't do that. Um, you know, although having said that, you'll find that a lot of times it's like, we don't do that in public. But, you know, if we go back to the room, then we can do that. But, wink, wink, no, right, no, right. no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it, Part of what we talked about is really navigating that, is really kind of finding safe places to participate in those two communities, in those two things, um, you know, but, but still being safe. And then also, you know, what do I need to disclose about myself and when? Or what do I expect other people to disclose about themselves and when, when I enter into these communities? So if someone is bi or trans and looking for a space, a safe place, uh, are there communities out there that, you know, you can talk about that might be? Yeah, there, there are. Um, but one has to navigate those uh, choices very carefully. Okay. And one of the things that um, people have to be aware of as they're searching for communities is to be certain that someplace in their description that they will say they're welcoming to um, bi and trans folk. Because okay. if they don't explicitly say that, then um, they might not be the best choice right. for a person who's searching for a community. Okay, so what are some, in addition to the, you know, saying they're welcoming, are there other things that people want to look out for or watch for when they're 
selecting a community or searching for a community? One of the things that, that we talked about is groups within those communities um, should have something called a munch or a meet and greet. A, a munch is another word for a meet and greet. Okay. You know, um, so if the group doesn't have that, if they just say, oh, no, you know, anybody that's on this app or on this website can come to our parties or events. Okay. That's an immediate red flag that it's like, okay, literally anyone could show up there. Oh boy. You yeah. Know, um, you know, they're, they're not filtering at, at, at all. So chances are you will run into biphobia, transphobia, as well as, you know, anybody else that is an abuser that's a, you know, I mean, you know, any number of, of behaviors and, and personality types that you don't want to interact right. with. So first and foremost, do they have a munch? Do they have a meet and greet? Do they have a way of vetting somebody before they say, hey, we're having an event okay. on this day at this location? So meet and greet or munch, if I were to be interested in this and there was a munch, yep. what would I expect if I were to come to a munch or a meet and greet? Well, you would uh, expect, first of all, to have an opportunity to socialize okay. with people who are there because meet and greets and munches are often held in localities where um, the venue is conducive to that. Okay. Um, I know groups that have met, for example, in the back rooms of pizza okay. uh, all restaurants right. All right. Um, in a private setting right. and ordered food in and uh, had nice social time before uh -huh. the actual event started and then those people oftentimes afterwards feel free to talk with one another and to investigate a little bit further and get other people's opinions about what went on at that event right. so they should, at, at, a, at a munch they i mean they should really talk about you know the rules of the group okay you know what should you expect in terms of what's going to go on and you know who's allowed to do what mm -hmm. um there should be cons you know conversations about how much they emphasize you know consent whether it's affirmative consent whether you know exactly you know how do people behave in this environment mm -hmm. um can you consume alcohol can you um utilize um recreational drugs mm -hmm. um you know, certainly within the kink community, a lot of um, different organizations are an absolute no okay. you know, on that. That you know, as soon as you start to become the least bit impaired, you know, you enter into a dangerous area in sure. the kink community. Um, maybe not quite as severe in the swinging community, but even then, you know, if someone becomes intoxicated, they they legally can't give consent. Right. So yeah. you know, do they police that? Do they monitor that? Uh -huh. But it's also an, that opportunity to ask them, you know, about you know by trans inclusiveness. Okay. You know, and if they kind of give you a blank stare about like, well, what is that? Then you know that's it's like okay, this is maybe not the group that okay. that I should be in. If yeah. someone is vetting someone, a newbie, for mm -hmm. example, what? How do they vet them? What are they gonna? You know, if I show up and I I'm being vetted, what what are? Well, with ask the, me? With how will you vet me? With the munches and the meet and greets, um, in some groups it becomes an automatic vetting process because okay. you attended, and you had the opportunity to ask questions or contribute your own point of view to the discussion. Um, if the vetting takes place off site from a munch or a meet and greet, we preferably see groups that really only want to do that one on one. So they'll oftentimes meet in a coffee shop someplace or some neutral, neutral ground where no one feels threatened sure. in any way. Um, it's really not the best situation to vet a person over the telephone mm -hmm. because yeah. you can't see body language you can't uh really form uh the best opinion yeah. of of what that person's likely yeah. to contribute or not contribute to the group it's also important to know if the group um, has moderators and if those moderators will ban people from the group mm -hmm. uh, if there are complaints right that are made or if the moderators and they're always moderators at gatherings mm -hmm. um if the moderators notice something untoward or, mm -hmm. or what what have you, they will speak with the person who's out of line. Mm -hmm. And um, in severe cases, simply wind up banning the person. Mm -hmm. 
I would guess that for people that are um, experienced, you kind of get a sense for who ought not be there in any given place. Right. I mean, you get pretty savvy yeah. about trusting your gut about. I mean, at, at a meet and greet, we spend you know probably the most amount of time talking about our rules, mm -hmm. talking about what to expect. Um, but then there is social interaction, you know, where we try and get everyone in the room on at least a little bit of, you know, chatting and, and interaction. So it's kind of like, okay, is this somebody that should be a part of this group or mm -hmm. am I getting a vibe from this person that mm, maybe not? Yeah. You know, um, the other thing that we talk about is, um, you know, what do they have on their profile? You know, um, a lot of times people will have, rather than some type of a picture, it'll still be the default question mark. And for their about me part, it says, oh, I really hate to write about myself uh -huh. or I so really hate to write. telling you anything, right. yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, then there is no way in the world that you're going to get invited to this because you've literally told us nothing. Yeah, you know, and, evasive. Right, and, yeah. Yeah, and we don't expect a, you know, a portrait picture of, you know, this is me. Yeah. Um, but we do expect the picture to be relatively recent. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, some people, it's like it was 15 years and 50 pounds ago. That was that was me. It's like, yeah. but, okay, that's not who walked through the room. Right. Um, you know, and again, not that it's a um, that it's a beauty contest or not that you have to pass, you know, a, a body, you know, shape bar or something. But it and this gets into the disclosure side, but it gets into how honest are you? Yes. You know, if if you've got pictures that you're claiming to be you that don't actually represent what you look like now. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well now you've already lied to me. Right. You yeah. know, out of out of the gate. So there are other things that, you know, we and other people in this group would have an expectation to know. And we can probably pretty well guess that there's a better than average chance that you'll lie to us about that too. All right. So integrity and honesty are pretty important right. in terms of keeping the safety of it and the fun right. and the pleasure as right. well. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So what are some of the disclosure um, issues that, that surface at? Well, in our conversation today, at the top of the list were um, disclosures regarding STIs. Okay. Uh, and the full variety of issues and conditions that, that um, people may want to know or should be told about. Okay, so for about. the audience, uh, spell out the acronym that you just used, STI. Oh, um, <laughs> sexually transmitted, transmitted infections. infections yeah. So, right. you know, Sometimes and, STDs. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, you know, it's, you know, and, and there was, you know, a, a, a lot of discussion about that because it's like, so, if someone is herpes positive, but they're, you know, in remission, they haven't had a flare up in ten years. Uh -huh. You know, they've been on medication. It's like, okay, well, so when is that relevant? Yes. You know, yes. and and one of the things that we talked about is relevancy varies whether you're the person who is herpes positive. Uh -huh. You know, I might have a, a thing. Well, I don't really need to disclose that ever. Uh huh. But the other person that I might be about to engage in an activity with might have an expectation that I want to know that up front. Right. You know, and so you know, the, therein lies the rub, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You know, and, and it's, it's true with a lot of you know, these disclosures. There, there are people that will be in the lifestyle that are married or have a partner mm -hmm. you know, that don't disclose that. Okay. You know, for whatever reason. You know, I mean, whether you know, they think that, well, it... it my, I've discussed it with my partner and they don't care or they know about it, or mm -hmm. I might be here at this event and they're at some other event across town and that's just our relationship. Mm -hmm. Or it could be someone that they're at home with the kids and- Somebody's on the down low, right, huh? Right, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm at a ball game. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, um, yeah, another important um, issue has to do with orientation, sexual orientation, and um, gender identity as well. Uh, if you are um, trans or gender nonconforming or gender queer or gender fluid, um, should those things be disclosed or should they not be disclosed? Uh -huh. And um, particularly for gender identity, in the trans community, it, there can be a lot of um, physical danger in disclosing 
that identity because we know for a fact, and we're coming up on November 20th yes. pretty soon, the yes. Transgender Day of Remembrance that honors trans folks who've been murdered in the past yes. year, that, that, that that's a reality that has to right. be paid attention to. So those kind of disclosures are sometimes really difficult especially if um, you get the feeling that you're being pressured into, into making that disclosure. Uh, sexual orientation can be tough for bi people because mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of heteronormativity in uh, groups and um, monosexuality. Mm -hmm. And while most of the American pub public, estimated to be 50% or more, is really bi, mm -hmm. uh, very small number are willing to uh, disclose yeah, or even, that way, or even yeah. identify yeah, that way to that. themselves yes. Yes. because somehow it, it's got a, a stigma right. around it. And, and it's interesting on profiles, you'll, it's not at all unusual to see people on their profile identify as straight. Okay. But then there might be an event that says, well, you have to, to come to this event, you know, you have to be something other than straight okay. because that's -mono, huh? right that's what this is about and you'll get people that will say oh yeah i want to come to the party and you'll email back and it's like but you're straight uh -huh. oh i'm not really straight i just don't want to put that on my profile and it's like hmm. okay well <laughs> um that's a problem <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But, but it it obviously you know and that was part of what we talked about in in the the workshop that disclosures there will never be a universally accepted, this is what you need to disclose when. Right, okay. You know, as, no hard and fast rules. Here. Right. Yeah. You know, as, you know, as someone who is single and might not want to interact with people that are married or partnered, mm -hmm. I've got an idea of when that disclosure should happen. Mm -hmm. That other person has a different idea. Mm -hmm. um, we might not ever agree on that, but if I'm going to be involved in these communities, in my mind, I should have a list of here are things I want to know about this person right. and when I should know them. Uh -huh. But at the same time, my own list is like, OK, here are things about me that I'm willing to disclose or things that I am not ever going to disclose. Yeah. You know, and so, again, like kind of at that munch, it's like, would I have to talk about this aspect of me to be in this group? Right. Yeah, you know, and if the answer to that is yes, it might be like, okay, um, then I don't really want to be part of this group right. because that, in my mind, I've I've set that limit. I I don't feel that I should have to do that. I'm guessing also that many of the organizations or the activities that you participate in are adults only, consensual adults. Absolutely. You know, so yes. you know, there's lots of misunderstandings out there. We want to make sure that we're absolutely. Right. Yeah. 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 And and. If someone is on the edge of that age group, we will say you need to either at the munch um, pull out your ID or yeah. you know send a picture of it, you know, so that I can make sure it's like yep okay you know, yeah yeah <laughs> this is well, you and get you're, you're twenty one yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and especially because not only from a consent standpoint but you know I mean, people over eighteen you know are legally can give consent. But at most of these parties, there's going to be alcohol. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, well, now oh, we've got someone, yep. you know, there's a bottle of Jack Daniels or an open bottle of wine just sitting on the counter. You know, nobody's going to follow the 19-year-old around saying, oh, you, know, no, you can't do that. I mean, yeah. It's, you know. Good points. Yeah. And I don't know about you guys, but, and you folks maybe. <laughs> The older I get, everybody that's under 30 looks like they're 12. You know, so yeah. <laughs> my own ability yeah. to yeah. gauge age yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind yeah. of goes out the window. There, there so are, we have to have ways to prove it. There are some people I know in the lifestyle that like they, their hard limit was like no one younger than their children. All but right. They've since started to say, okay, that's eliminating more and more people. So that, <laughs> that, 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 that limit can't work anymore. <laughs> Yeah, so now that my kids are 40, right. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. like, I think someone who's 35 is probably. Yeah, yeah your, options, your options are shrinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you find that, um, you know, there are differences with age in terms of who shows up? I mean, are you getting more and more younger people, more older people, just everybody across the bell curve, so to speak? I think they, they these groups, the swinging groups tend to be, 
tend to be 30s and up. Okay. But um, there are certainly, I mean, a number of 20-somethings that, you know, that, that will show up um, okay. as, as well. You know, um, so, it, I mean, it it varies, you know, and there again, that's something to ask about, you know, in a month. It's like, well, you know, what, you know, who generally shows up? You know, that. And the, the question that we will sometimes get that, you know, they'll you know, some people and it tells, again, something about the person that wants to join the group. They'll, you know, well, is everybody there hot? Oh, you know, and it's like, well, one, um, I don't know what hot. All right. What is hot to, to you? you? Yeah. You know, you know, um, that, you know, some people think this is hot. Thank, uh-huh. Thankfully, yeah, other yeah, people yeah. are like, oh, my God, no. Um, I think my shoes know. are hot. Right. We're yeah, going to get, yeah. you know, oh, my shoes on camera awesome. here. Yeah. yeah. Plus there's unicorns yeah. on them, too. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You know. So the, <laughs> the thing that, that we tell people is, like, I mean, if you're if you're coming to these events and these parties expecting that you're, you're going to engage with Ken and Barbie. Yeah. You're going or to the be Chip disappointed. Chip and Dales or somebody. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, um, they, yeah. They don't typically come to our parties. Okay. You know, um, if, on the other hand, you're coming to these events because you want to interact with like minded people uh-huh. that have a, a positive attitude about what we're doing, then you're going to enjoy yourself. But, you know, it's, you know, it's not, you know, it's not people that are on the cover of People magazine. All right. Yeah. I think we're running, getting down uh, the home stretch, three minutes. Are is there anything that we haven't talked about that you want to let our audience know as we're coming down the home stretch here? Oh dear me! <laughs> well, I think I would just say that I mean, in you know, in the kink and lifestyle world, there is safety in groups. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of apps. There are a lot of things where you can find people for transactional, you know, encounters. Yeah. Um, but if you want more community, if you want to interact with people, you want to seek out a group. Okay. You know, and then finding that group that works for you through going to munches and f- asking, well, what goes on here? What are the rules here? What are the expectations? Um, the chances are much better that one, you can safely enjoy what it is mm-hmm. that you're setting out to do um, and that you will find a sense of community. You will find people that you know, on a number of different levels, you will continue to interact with, you know, other than the initial purpose of, you know, I was at this thing, you know, because I, I you know, am into kink. Where did this term munch come from? No <laughs> idea. No That's idea. just one of the terms that munch. Yeah. I'm going to um, a munch, not brunch, but yeah. munch. And, right. and munch, I mean, to me seems, I, I, I mean, it seems like it's originated in more the kink world than you know, the, the lifestyle world or something. Okay. So I, where where and how that happened, that no idea. Okay, but now yeah. we know what munch is. At least yeah. I do, so. Yeah, yeah. nothing right. to do with munchkins, I don't no. know. Munchkins, yeah, no. Oz, we've arrived, yeah. huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Click your heels three times. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's the, the safety of groups, and it's the, again, in your mind, having thought through what am I comfortable disclosing, and what do I expect to be disclosed in that? Mm-hmm. And what I am mean, I willing to do and not do right. with activities? Right. Before I know this, before I know the list of, you know, you know how, how far into this relationship will I go without knowing everything I ultimately would want to know about this person? Well, it has been an absolute delight to have you on the show, Jamie Ann Myers, Jim Larson. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on Buy Cities. And would you welcome us or would you join me in our... Signature goodbye, which is bye. Bye, bye.